Hey, what's up guys? Gons here for the Face Like the Sun YouTube channel. I wanted to read for you an article that was published by The Motley Fool over a year ago. The article is called Three Tech Giants Quietly Investing in Synthetic Biology. It's time for tech investors to acknowledge the potential of sneaky R&D projects in synthetic biology at Autodesk, Intel, and Microsoft. And in conjunction with the news about Microsoft's holoportation, which basically brings Star Wars style holograms to life and the rollout of the Oculus Rift, there's one element that is missing from all of this, and that's the sense of touch. So a lot of these technologies are bringing audio and visual to a whole new level, but things like smell and touch are still missing. And this is where synthetic biology comes in. So if you haven't seen what the holoportation device is about or the HoloLens or the Oculus Rift by now, go check it out. I'll leave links in the description section so you can look at them yourselves. But for now, let me just read this article for you. Again, this is a website, The Motley Fool, which is basically a stock exchange website that provides leading insight and analysis about stocks, helping investors stay informed. So, you know, it talks about technology and the future of it and where things are headed. So let me read this article for you. The introduction and widespread adoption of fun new gadgets, games, and services in the last 15 years has provided billions of dollars of revenues and profits to the technology companies innovative and lucky enough to grab your attention. So if I ask you what you think will fuel the growth of today's technology giants in the next 15 years, what would your answer be? You might say familiar or trendy terms such as user growth or the internet of things, or perhaps that the companies with the most innovative products and services will reign king in tomorrow's tech markets. And while those are likely partially correct answers, there's a tremendous amount of growth to be had from a rather unlikely source. It might be difficult to believe that companies that have traditionally relied on silicone chips, mobile apps, and lines of software code could profit from something as seemingly disconnected as making biological engineering as predictable as traditional engineering fields. But a closer look into research and development spending hints that it may not be that far-fetched at all. Why are Autodesk, Intel, and Microsoft quietly investing in synthetic biology? And what could it mean for investors? Project Cyborg seeks to transform the design of living systems. Computer-aided design, or CAD, software has revolutionized how our world is built. But the seamless efficiency and accuracy won't be relegated to digital movies, buildings, engine parts, and airplanes for long. Autodesk is investing in bio-CAD tools for synthetic biology applications through Project Cyborg, which is part of the company's bio-nano-programmable matter group. The team is led by Carlos Olguin, and is also home to Andrew Hassell, one of the field's most infectious thought leaders and the guest speaker at the Motley Fool's annual writers' conference last September. Autodesk Chief Technology Officer Jeff Kowalski considers design tools for synthetic biology a more lucrative opportunity than even 3D printing. That's big talk, especially considering that the company plans to invest $100 million into 3D printing startups over the next several years. But he might be right. What is currently referred to as the BioCAD industry is comprised of glorified text editors for building DNA, although it is already beginning to replace less efficient protocols that are widely used in biology laboratories throughout the world. That opportunity alone is worth several billion dollars per year. But Autodesk has larger ambitions to capture an even bigger opportunity. An actual CAD program would allow researchers to design virtual organisms from DNA strands to cell chassis, test their behavior in virtual environments, and model changes to biological systems without lifting a pipette. Researchers could accurately predict the function of a cell before it was built, similar to how virtual airplanes are expected to fly when the first prototype is built. Of course, there's a long way to go before we can fine-tune our understanding of complex biological systems, but even basic early tools could help Autodesk diversify and expand its $2.3 billion in annual revenue. Better yet, digitizing life could become a major revenue source for the company by the end of the decade. Fish in a laboratory. Another way to make biology more predictable is to reduce human error and weed out noise in experimental data. Like it or not, most published research is actually nonsense, or at the very least, unable to be reproduced. Amgen and Bayer recently attempted to reproduce the results from landmark cancer biology studies. That should have been as simple as following the exact protocols in each paper, but Amgen could only recreate 11% of the results, which Bader enjoyed a 25% success rate. In some instances, the original researchers could not even recreate the results from their own work. That's pathetic considering the majority of research surveyed received federal funding and or was used as the basis for larger clinical trials. Intel believes a better solution is to follow each experiment 
from start to finish with smart machines. Autodesk wants to digitize life. Intel wants to digitize research. So with the help of Eric Clavin's Synthetic Biology Laboratory at the University of Washington, the company is testing a system that tracks everything that occurs in the laboratory with cameras, outfits all equipment with smart sensors, and designs machine learning protocols that allow computers to make real-time suggestions for experiment parameters. Known as the Aquarium Project, Intel is studying the behaviors of real research in the lab, the FISH, to develop a smart system to make biology research more reproducible. The company thinks a successful system could be used to document experiments, train new staff, teach students, and double-check the work of stubborn professors. If the complex environment of a wet lab, biology lab, can be quantified with software and machine learning, then other systems, such as a factory or medical facility, could deploy similar technology to reduce unnecessary cost from human error. It is still in the early days, but Intel could very well be developing a revolutionary technology much different from its core business. Microsoft newest programmable language. Everyone wants to discuss the latest edition of the Surface tablet or if the start menu will be added back to the next rendition of Windows or the Xbox One. But Microsoft could get the last laugh with a newly created programmable language. No, it won't build the next great mobile game, although it could make biology much more predictable. Microsoft Research created the Genetic Engineering of Cells or GEC simulator that breaks cellular processes into their most basic interactions by focusing on the concept of modularity, or in this case, biological parts. Consider that genes and proteins are largely responsible for dictating how a cell functions, but we are still learning how specific combinations interact in even the most well-understood organisms. That can be troublesome when deciding which biological parts are needed to provide a desired outcome, such as producing a specific chemical, and has led to many costly mistakes for industrial biotech and agricultural companies. GEC aims to solve that by translating desired functionality into DNA code, which is the reverse of current biological engineering efforts. In other words, suppose researchers want certain bacteria to produce a never-before-synthesized fragrance compound. They would tell Microsoft's GEC what end product they want, perhaps with known constraints, and the programmable language would output the DNA sequence needed to achieve the synthesis of the molecule. The current GEC is quite basic, but it allows researchers to build new organisms without knowing the specific parts available. By comparison, several bio-CAD startups have started with less of a foundation and less robust tools and still manage to land multi-billion dollar partners and customers. It will take a bit more tweaking, but Microsoft could jump into synthetic biology tools with a splash before the end of the decade. What does it mean for investors? In the near future, many everyday products will be created from living systems. That includes easy-to-imagine products, such as fuels and foods, and eyebrow-raising products, such as electrical wires and car tires. The wave of innovation will build strength in the next few years and create major opportunities for not just the companies designing the organisms and industrial processes, but also for those supplying them with the tools behind the scene. Yet when I speak to most investors, it quickly becomes obvious they are completely unaware of the R&D projects underway today at their favorite tech companies. So if you're willing to take a closer look at the research being performed at Autodesk, Intel, and Microsoft, then you can be a step ahead of your peers in realizing new avenues of potential growth. So that's the article. The reason why the Motley Fool would even report on this is because they own shares of Intel and Microsoft, so they have some insight into where those companies are going in terms of technology. And it all ties back to what was discussed with Nicholson 1968 on Canary Cry Radio episode 103, where we talked about the black goo and programmable matter and how it might relate to biblical prophecy and the abomination of desolation, even Revelation 12, and the flood that comes out of the dragon's mouth. These are all things that historically could not be understood, but as Daniel says, knowledge will increase, and that's biblical knowledge, that's prophetic knowledge. And it's my opinion that we have to keep tabs on this, keep our finger on the pulse to watch what's coming. So let me know what you think. Do you think they're going to be able to achieve true synthetic biology and programmable matter? It's been in movies like Lucy and Spider-Man and other major motion pictures, but again, with the rollout of the HoloLens and Oculus Rift, I think we're going to see more people covering their eyes, so to speak, with these devices and the major sense that's going to be missing is touch. And I think 3D printing aside, this sort of synthetic biology is the next phase to really bridge that gap between the virtual realities and the physical realities and what sorts of entities will be able to manifest through these portals. Hope you guys have an awesome day. God bless.